You are listening to the Think Brick Australia podcast. Think Brick Australia represents the clay, brick and paver manufacturers of Australia. Brick by Brick, our podcast will discuss technical information and architectural case studies with special guests. I'm your host, Elizabeth McIntyre, the CEO of Think Brick Australia. On today's podcast, it's my great pleasure to be here with Simon Rodriguez from Rodriguez Body Coat Architects. And we're here in Perth, a little bit on the cool side, but welcome to the podcast, Simon. Thank you. Simon, before we get sort of started as to some of your projects, I wonder whether you could tell us a little bit about your childhood growing up. I grew up in the suburb southeast of Fremantle in fairly modest circumstances. In a largish family, I went to the local state school and did quite well at school and went to university. When did sort of architecture come up as a, were you always a creative child or? My interest in architecture probably started with a, with an elective subject that I did in third year high school, which was technical drawing. I enjoyed drawing and I think that's what initiated my interest. And then from there, how did you sort of move to that decision? I needed to nominate four disciplines for university. I was encouraged to put medicine first, (laughs) architecture second, and I can't recall the other two. I just missed out on getting into medicine Oh, which was a blessing because I didn't really want to be, I didn't, I wasn't interested in being in the medical profession. And so I started a course in architecture at UWI. Were there any architects at that time that really made an impression on you, I guess? Mm. Postmodernism arrived during my architecture course. Right. And postmodernism sort of turned architecture on its head because up until then, the international style was predominant. Mm -hmm. So it didn't matter where you were building or designing buildings anywhere in the world, they would follow a predetermined modernist kind of ethos. Postmodernism suggested that um, architecture could be so much more. Mm -hmm. So there were a number of architects, quite a few who were not following the international style, you know, orthodoxy. Perhaps one of the most important architects that I was interested in in relation to bricks Mm -hmm. was Louis Kahn. Yes. And, in fact, I did a thesis study of Louis Kahn and his philosophy. Oh, wow. Mm. Has that impacted what you've done today in some of your projects? Well, I think my journey has gone uh, in all sorts of different directions, Mm. but Louis Kahn is somebody I return to at least philosophically. Yes. And, and I still admire his buildings. Yeah. That lasted. So you finish university and then what happens? What do you do then? I graduated in the early 80s. And my first project was a brick house in City Beach. But following that, the fashion for face brickwork declined. Oh, really? And sadly, the materials that architects use are very much influenced by fashion. Mm. And that fashion can often be foisted on architects by their clients. Yeah. And even though I've done a number of brick buildings during my career at different Mm. points of time, they have only been with clients who have understood that brick can be a beautiful thing Mm -hmm. and have gone against the prevailing fashion. Okay. Because after the 80s or during the 80s, the prevailing fashion, particularly in residential buildings, was for render. Mm. And it started with natural renders and then with texture-coded renders. And that's tended to prevail until very recently. Mm. And what we've seen recently is a resurgence of interest in brickwork, as you would probably have noticed. Mm. And therefore, a house like the Peppermint Grove House became a possibility you know, this commercial project we did on Stirling Highway 
in brickwork was also a possibility because clients were seeing other examples of very fine brickwork buildings. And why do you like working with brick? I mean, why do you like designing in brick? I think the brick, particularly in Western architecture, the brick represents the kind of building block of construction. And, you know, from the Romans onwards, the brick has been part of our building culture. So it's a very ancient, in, in a sense, material. And I think that's what attracts people. And it's a real material. You know, mm. it's, it's various forms of clay baked in a hot oven, laid by hand, and, you know, it has its own particular qualities. With League Street, in terms of the working with the brick and I guess the texture and the colours that were chosen, was that something that you sort of directed or did the client? No, that was um, di- directed by me mm-hmm. and it was a difficult process because the the house needed to be, needed to meet a budget. Right. So we looked at different bricks from different manufacturers. Mm-hmm. We looked at bricks from the East Coast, people like, I think, Robertson's. Yes. But we managed to find a local brick made in Geraldton oh, by the, yeah, by yes. the Ger- Geraldton brick, brick Company, which kind of met the aesthetic qualities that we were seeking and was affordable. And I notice here that you've used quite a lot of sort of circles and arches. Is there anything that surprised you about brick during this, these constructions? Well, I think some of the shapes, you know, circular shapes are obviously fashionable. Yes. So, you know, I've, I've been influenced by fashion to a degree in relation to those shapes. However, we've, we've tried to do, you know, more contemporary. Mm. The gestures are more contemporary, if you like. Did I discover anything about bricks? Well, I mean, I mean, there are many projects that explore brickwork mm. far more than mm-hmm. this particular project. I suppose we relearn some of the lessons of brickwork. You know that you have to set it out in certain ways. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure how much more yeah, I can yeah. say about that. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. I guess in terms of all the projects that you've worked on, is there a favourite that you have? I think my favourite projects, and I'm not saying this because this is a (laughs) Think Brick interview, are projects where bricks were used. And I did two houses for the same client in bricks, which remain two of my favourite projects. These two that are featured in the Think Brick magazine, the awards are also, you know, projects that I value. And I think the reason is that there's very little paint used when you build in brick. Mm. And people don't appreciate appreciate that paint is liquefied plastic that's applied to things. And even if you ignore the toxic components of plastic, you're hiding all the natural processes that occur in clays and in plasters and sand and cement. Mm. So I think that's probably the reason why I I warm more to those sorts of projects than others which are finished in render or paint. Yeah, we always, I mean, we don't like it when people paint brick because Mm. for exactly the reasons that you say, but also because it comes in so many colours, people tend to think that it doesn't, but it actually you don't need to paint it. No, no, I agree. I've been guilty of painting brickwork (laughs) and I think my excuse is this. It's very hard to find a good-looking brick in Perth. Okay. When we propose to use bricks in buildings, we normally have to go to the East Coast. Okay. And we even consider imported bricks from places like Scandinavia. Mm-hmm. But usually price is a, an issue in those situations, so mm-hmm. it's very rare that we can do that. Mm-hmm. So Perth has a real problem. It doesn't produce a brick that architects like. Right. It used to produce, there used to be boutique brick makers in Perth. Yes. You know, in various country towns, for instance, and they used to produce what architects considered a genuine looking brick. Mm. Most bricks produced today look a little artificial. The mm. colours look artificial. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you've always chosen, I guess, that, that really sort of, 
deep earthy brown rather than the well, the, the, red brick. The, the reason we like the Geraldton brick mm -hmm. was that it has some life in the in the surface. So some of the bricks are more reflective you than others. Them. There's yeah. a slight sheen on them. Yeah. There's a slight metallic quality. So the the brick is very much alive. Mm. And where do you see with architects? You've talked a lot about trends and and fashion. Where do you see architecture going in the next? sort of decade or so? Well, currently, uh, brick is quite fashionable, <laughs> which is great. And there are some really fine brick buildings being designed. But fashion will prevail mm -hmm. and bricks will, you know, once again, step back and other materials will enjoy. You know. And where do you see with what's going on with the climate and a lot of building nowadays, what do you see the role of architects when in the built environment in terms of their contribution to, I guess, carbon mm. emissions and, and that aspect? Well, I think they play an important role because they have some control over that process. Mm -hmm. Sadly, the client has considerable control okay. and often the architect's good intentions are overruled by the client, sometimes the budget you know, doesn't permit some some processes. I mean, architects have to stand their ground, mm. but there's a lot of competition out there for design work and you can lose clients quite quite easily if you're too, you know, if you're too inflexible on issues of sustainability or, you know. And where do you see it? Are, is it important to clients? Are there conversations coming up or does price sort of prevail. I remember a couple of years ago we did a survey and as long as it wasn't going to impact anyone's Caesar Stone beach top, they, yeah. they were okay to be far a bit more. But I wondered what's your perspective <clears throat> on that. I think it varies from it varies from person to person. Mm. Some people are committed to it, including clients. Mm. And if you get a client like that it's fantastic. Yeah. I think the current inflation in the construction economy is going to be a problem yeah. <clears throat> for those sorts of processes. And what projects do you have coming up? Anything that we should yeah. be looking out for? It's been relatively quiet okay. over the last six or so months, so I can't say I'm doing anything in face brick at the okay. moment. <laughs> I'd like to, but yeah. uh, in fact, I'm doing a project at the moment where we're painting the brick, which oh. is because the client wants painted brick. Oh. All right, well, so we're just going to go through these rapid fire questions. Oh, yeah. They're all, <clears throat> any answers are acceptable. Reading the news, a newspaper or online? Both. Handwriting or typing? I do a lot of handwriting, but I also do a lot of typing with emails. Don't we all? For sketching ideas and concepts, would you use a pencil, pen, or an e pen? I, I use a felt tip pen. Do you like to read books or listen to audio books? I read books. What's important to you, style or substance? Always substance. Coffee or tea? Coffee. TV shows or movies? Both. Antique or modern? Both. Call or text? I tend to text. <laughs> Travel back in time or into the future? Neither. <laughs> <laughs> Staying right live, here. Live in the present. <laughs> so, exterior or interior? Both. Video games or board games? No games. No games? Form or function? I'd say form and function. And with relation to design, complex or simple? Simple. Simon, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this very brief chat, but I appreciate you coming on to the podcast. Thank you. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please follow rate and review our podcast we are always looking for new ways to think brick if you have an idea of what you'd like to hear about there's a link in our show notes to let us know